Good afternoon, Poet fans. Welcome to Coleman's Corner. I'm Lance Franny. I'm joined this afternoon by Special Assistant to the President and Executive Director of Athletics, Robert Coleman. Now, Rob, it has been a long time since we have chatted, uh -huh. and we have a lot to catch up on from the spring, and what a spring it was. We will start first at Memorial Stadium, men's lacrosse. You know, what were some highlights from those, both those seasons, men's and women's? Well, I think for the men, I, I, first of all, going away and having some big wins back in, uh, in Pennsylvania was, was a huge part of our season. Um, it didn't end exactly the way we wanted to, very close margin of us getting in and being left out of the NCAA championship. Um, so that, that was disappointing. But I think the guys had a really nice season, and they should be proud of the season they had. I think they worked really hard, and um, I think Brian's worked really hard with our schedule, and I think we're prepared for next year going into that. So, okay. um, you know, I think for the ladies, um, you know, Trish coming in as a new coach, um, really trying to change the culture of that team, I think we took that first step. Um, it was an important first step. Uh, but but we have a ways to go uh, there. I mean, obviously the men are more established program, and and uh, and the ladies. I think uh, good recruiting season for them, bringing in some new players, and really taking that next step up in the conference. Uh, okay. You know, last couple of years finishing on the bottom has not been you know where we want to be. So uh, so we have some goals to obtain, and and I think you know by year three, I think for Trish, uh, that's. You know, we need to be rolling by that point. So the next two years are really important. But this first step this year, um, really trying to change the culture of our team, um, you know, I think she accomplished that piece. Okay, now moving over into track. Kevin Curbelo, um again made his way to the NCAA National Championships in the 400 meter. Looking, and he looked to defend his 2013 title. He came in with the 10th fastest time, but he ended up falling short. You know, he didn't qualify and he failed to become the first or the program's first four time All American in the history of the school. But how does his decorated track resume compare to others in the program? You know, do you think he's probably one of the best individual athletes ever to come through the program? Well, sure, he's up there. Mm -hmm. There's no question. I mean, this is a really storied uh, athletic uh, uh, program here. Mm -hmm. And so we've had some tremendous uh, individual uh, sport athletes who have walked through here. But you know, Kevin's accomplishments speak for themselves. Um, you know, if he's not number one, he's certainly top three, top five. But, hey, he can walk away uh, knowing that he is the only one ever to win an individual uh, or, or even team mm -hmm. national championship. I mean, that can't be taken away. Yeah. And so, uh, look, w w we've known uh, pretty much after Kevin's sophomore year that he mm -hmm. was going to be a Hall of Famer one day. Um, there's no question he'll be in this room. Um, you know, shortly, um, and uh, and deservingly so. Very, you know, I know he was disappointed um, about how it all finished, so to speak. Um, but you know, we, we're going to make. Uh, I think we have already. I mean, we're working really hard with our coaching staff for next year, and kind of having a new direction and, 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 and new thoughts of how we can move our track and field program in the right direction. Um, right. Though we've had some really great individual athletes on that team. We really want to focus a bit more on the team aspect of it. Okay. Uh, and uh, So again, good conversations with Coach Hogan, some new staff going to be added, and uh, hopefully right. we're going to take that in a different direction. Compete for the Sky Championship. Yeah, I mean, that's the goal. Yeah. Absolutely. Awesome. That will be the goal. Now, on the links, men's golf had a tough season this year. You know, four of the six players were freshmen, so they gained quality experience this year. Um, they finished near the bottom of the Sky standings, but very talented group of individuals. On the women's side, same exact thing, but again, Ayaka Hamano was all Sky for the second year in a row. Um, but they have Erica Rodriguez as well that joined her. But it's promising for both programs in the future for both Rich Kim and um, Mike King to move forward. Yeah, and then this is an important season for both of them. Again, um, you know, we'll just start with the men first. I mean, we were in. Went, we took a couple of individuals to the NCA a couple of years back, had a nice ranking and so forth. Since then, we've kind of been rebuilding because they graduated. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, looking looking in on the team, we have some good young players. We're bringing some more good, you know, so we're going to be young. Mm -hmm. But at the same point, it, it's bringing that talent in so you can have three or four good years and not just one good year. So, so Rich gets it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we didn't finish again the way we wanted to mm -hmm. on the men's side there, but... Uh, on the on the ladies end, you know, two two rough years. Uh, good individual player, mm -hmm. obviously, yes. but um, I think Mike's kind of figured out the recruiting piece, bringing eight or nine new girls mm -hmm. in next year. Um, you know, making competition or creating competition on that team. 
So I, I you know, we, we started that team, and, and in all honesty, we probably should have been a club first for a mm-hmm. year or two okay. instead of just jumping in mm-hmm. like we did. Yeah. So those first two years were really painstaking, mm-hmm. so to speak, because we could have been a club yeah. and then become varsity, okay. but we just jumped in. Mm-hmm. So yeah, we had we've had some you know some pain going through this process a little yes. bit of trying to find players and all mm-hmm. that. You know, Mike did a nice job recruiting nine players. So we're going to create competition on this team this year. And, mm-hmm. and we have some individual talent. So so we're really looking to make a, a jump in women's golf for certain next year. There's okay. no question about that. So, Great. so again, I, I think those teams we just talked about, you know, women's lacrosse, the track and fields, men's and women's golf. I mean, they, you know, we had a great spring. Those were four that I would say didn't have, you know, great records. Mm-hmm. But we need to move in, 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 in a north, northern direction with these teams because, you know, uh, I think overall, just our women's teams is, mm-hmm. is something we've got to make a concerted effort. Our men's yes. teams acquired a lot of points in the conference mm-hmm. this year. We had a nice season with 94, 95 points, and mm-hmm. we're one point away from passing uh, Chapman for mm-hmm. fifth place. But our, our women's sports aren't aren't accumulating enough points for us to okay. kind of take it where we want to take it. So so there'll be more of a focus on the women's lacrosse and the okay. women's golfs and the women's okay. track because we, we definitely okay. have to make a move north north there. Because that goal is to reach 100 points. There. Of course, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Okay. That, that, that is definitely a goal of ours. Awesome. Now, now, moving into the diamond, softball had 26 wins, the second most in the program's history. Mm-hmm. They graduated Courtney Delano, which she's probably going down as one of the <clears throat> good, strong pitchers in the program's history. Um, but... Moving forward with that, they made the postseason tournament once again. But what are they? What do they need moving forward? They graduated a good, strong class, mm-hmm. but they have one pitcher coming back mm-hmm. in Samantha Balloon. Mm-hmm. So what? What else are they going to need? I mean, again, I, I think you need two quality pitchers. Mm-hmm. First off, I mean, I, I think it shows from our conference when you have two quality pitchers. Um, you know, you can do you can do a lot of work not only just in our conference but nationally speaking, mm-hmm. and and that's our goal is really that second pitcher. Um, you know. We have a great group of kids coming in. Um, you know, hopefully there's a pitcher or two, which we know of in that mix. But we're going to continue to recruit even up to the beginning of the season. Um, and and I think that some of the returners are real good kids, real good quality kids, leaders for us. Um, so we'll be, you know, we'll have our our five six seniors, but we'll be fairly young actually for softball next okay. year. And and you know we're going to continue that. I mean I I don't see us going backwards, even though we have twenty six wins and so forth. I I think that record of wins here is going to go down eventually with mm-hmm. with the talent that's coming into our program. Mm-hmm. And uh, okay. you know it, it, more importantly besides the the wins is you know how do we get past the Redlands and the CMSs mm-hmm. to to win a championship? You yes. know we've we've done the third fourth place finish you know pretty mm-hmm. much consistently over the last three four years. But you know really it's more about taking that next step, which is trying to get a home field advantage mm-hmm. for the playoffs, winning a regular season, yes. mm-hmm. and, and trying to win a championship. And that's that's really our next goal. Okay, so big thing is there for softball. Now, moving over to baseball, they earned the program's first trip to the Sky Postseason Tournament, finishing third in the conference standings. They put together an 11-game winning streak and saw Julian Barzilli put together one of the most impressive single-season performances in the program's history. Being named Player of the Year in the West Region, leading all of Division Three in home runs with 17, and capping off the year being drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals in the 31st round. Head coach Mike Rizzo has done a tremendous job with this program and always brings in a talented class year after year, but what is he going to need and what does he need to bring in to move the program forward? Well, again, pitching. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, yeah. pitching's the name of the game. And, um, you know, Mike does a really nice job recruiting. We had a very exciting season. It was really entertaining. Mm-hmm. Um, wishing Julian the best. He's doing a great job right now in rookie ball. Had his first home run the other day, and, and uh, you know, batting fourth or fifth on the lineup. So, you know, it, it was real exciting the whole season for baseball and all the accolades that Julian got at the end of the year, all West Region, all American. Um, but at the name of the game is to stay there now. You know, not not just being a one year wonder and making the playoffs and then fading into the sunset and finishing sixth or seventh. Um, we lose a big bat, um, but it, it's still the name of the game is pitching. Yes. And, and uh, that's that's the end result. We had some good pitching this year. They're returning. Uh, we have some good, really good pitchers returning. I know Mike's excited about uh, uh, two or three pitchers that are coming into the program next right. year. We have a nice transfer coming in. I think that'll be able to play third base for us. We're in the, in the, in the middle of trying to finalize mm-hmm. in that piece. Okay. So uh, it doesn't necessarily think we're going to fall off just because we lose Julian. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a great player, mm-hmm. don't get me wrong. But, you know, we bring back great catcher, you know, and uh, we bring Ben back, mm-hmm. left field, great reliever for us. And so, 
you know, again, if we can get some more depth in our starting pitching, okay. then I, I feel really good. And, and, yeah. and keeping our coaching staff, quite mm -hmm. honestly. Okay. It's really important. We had a, we had a good coaching staff, and mm -hmm. Mike felt great with the staff and what they did this year, so that would be an important piece as well. Okay. Now, women's water polo, right number one the CWA polls for a majority of the season. But couldn't pull off tight games against CMS and Pomona Pitzer. Weren't blowouts, but were in it till the very end with both teams. They finished third in the Sky standings, which was the highest finish they've ever had in the program's history. Freshman Janelle Rivera was named the Sky Newcomer of the Year and tied the single season scoring record with 81 goals. Head coach Justin Pudwell loses some quality starters, but has some great returns coming back and some young talent. But do you think 2015 will be a breakout season once again for the girls with his class coming in? Yeah. I don't know what you've heard from I Justin. I, I think, mm -hmm. you know, I haven't heard much about the incoming class for the women. Okay. I've, I've heard more a little bit more about the men. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I, I think we'll continue. I think he has a great group coming back okay. and, and what he's adding to it. Mm -hmm. I think he feels really good about the future. And, you know, I, I don't see us going anywhere um, mm -hmm. at this point as far as going back down. I mm -hmm. think, if anything, we're right where we're at and we're going to continue to compete with the Pomona's and CMS. And, you know, they're great programs and no different from softball. We've got to, you know, earn our way kind of mm -hmm. over the top like the men's water polo team did this mm -hmm. year. Um, and, and I think they will. I think Justin is, is uh, you know, committed to that. And I think the addition of Sean to men's and women's swimming and kind of lessening the load a little bit for, for Justin, focusing on four teams, Instead, he oversees all four, but he's mm -hmm. really coaching two. Mm -hmm. I think it was a really big move because Sean's done a great job mm -hmm. with the men's and swimming uh, program as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think the, the future continues to remain very, very bright with water polo, no question. Great. Last but not least, we hit the court for men's and women's tennis. Men's tennis put together the program's best season, finishing 19 in the final rankings, beating Redlands and Cal Lutheran this year in the Sky Championships. First time that has ever been done in the program. Um, they also had David Konstantinov and Chris Schomer become All-Americans in both singles and doubles. First time we've ever had an All-American in that in the program's history. So Ben Belletto has done a tremendous job in his first year with the program as a director of tennis. What more does he have to do in order to be successful with this program? Recruit. You know, I mean, <laughs> really, it, it's, it's that simple. Ben did an amazing job. Our conference is so competitive, both men and women. Um, you know, who, who knows if we're ever going to win? You know, a championship. Mm -hmm. the, the the way CMS has played, um, right. and, and what they've been able to do. You know, it, it might never occur. I don't know. Well, that, that's our goal, mm -hmm. obviously. Yeah. But I think our finish of third place and you know topping Calu and Redlands in, in, in the tournament was a really big step for us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, good team, good players coming back. You know, great job by Dave and Chris. But uh, you know, I think I think Ben's got his uh, his finger you know, on the pulse here. Mm -hmm. You know, I know we've got a, a bunch of very talented women's tennis players coming in next year, mm -hmm. so we're really excited about that. Um, and, and, and I think that, you know, Ben understands, you know, we don't want to go backwards. Sure, we're 19th, you know, we finished 19th, and we, we want to stay there. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd love to be in the, in the top 15 in the country. Mm -hmm. um, and I think he gets that. He, he knows how to do that. He's yeah. the teams that promote them together that, that compete at that level. And, that, and that, I think that's going to continue to be our goal. Um, and so uh, I know David, you know, uh, deciding to go professional, um, you know, is a hit to our program, obviously losing a player of that stature. But, you know, Ben has, uh, you know, we're hopeful he's going to be able to secure a couple of these transfers that he's been uh, looking at and, and uh, you know, trying to not to, to miss a beat. Mm -hmm. And uh, but, but excited about the tennis program overall, not just the men, but also the ladies yes. and what we have coming in and, and increasing the depth because that's another team, obviously, that can help us and in the conference and acquiring points. Yes. Yeah. Could. On the women's side, again, like you say, you know, they cracked in the top 30 for the first time, just briefly. Mm -hmm. But, you know, at number one, Megan Zamilpa was uh, made nationals as a freshman, missed out this year due to an ankle injury, so she didn't play as many matches as she should have. Probably should have been in nationals, but wasn't able to make it. But, you know, I'd like to talk about the next steps for the program for women's tennis. You know, the recruiting. We have some quality uh, players coming in for the program next year. But, you know, moving forward with that with that team, you know, <clears throat> what else do you think they might have to do? I mean, for women's tennis, yeah, yeah, I mean, they have a chance. Like, like you said, getting the points for the team. Sure. Like, we can beat the Oxys, we can beat the Cal Lutherans, the teams that we should be beating. Mm -hmm. But now that next step is beating the Chapmans and Lavernes that are nationally yeah. ranked right now. I mean, I think I think it's just a mindset, and mm -hmm. I think that's what is one of Ben's uh, uh, biggest attributes. Is that you know, I think he helped the men a lot this year with mm -hmm. really just. You know, it's not necessarily talent as much as it 
is what's going on between your ears mm -hmm. and and being able to really focus and 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 just you know finish mm -hmm. you know closing people out yes. i mean there, there there's a part of that that's a mental part of mm -hmm. the game it's no different than golf you know you got great talent but then you get out there and you have three bad holes and become a basket case mm -hmm. you know and and that's what you know the redlands and the cms's and the laverns in the sport of golf have been able to do so okay. so for us is you know it's, it's really more that 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 psychology piece mm -hmm. you know that's really important for for women's golf and and for um, you know women's tennis mm -hmm. um, and, and 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 again I think we're going to see an, an increase especially in those two sports next year I think we'll we'll definitely see an increase there and, and I think water polo will be where they're at if not maybe taking at least one more step okay. um, you know right. so so again I, I think we're heading in the right direction and, and uh, I'm looking forward to that as well now that we've done the spring from last year you know we've recapped that I know we have a long time till the fall season rolls around here, you know, with uh, a couple months here before we start up. But can you touch upon maybe a little bit about fall season? It's kind of what have you been hearing? Maybe about some recruiting classes, maybe some teams that, you know, might be successful or like, I, I know a lot of our teams are going to be successful moving forward, but some that might have breakout years that maybe were on the back burner last year, but are going to move forward this upcoming year. Yeah, I mean, again, I... I look, I'm looking forward. It's going to come faster than we think. Obviously, it's July, sure. and people will be back here uh -huh. in six weeks. Right. Um, but just the recruiting piece, you know, obviously football did a nice job recruiting. Mm -hmm. brought in a bunch of kids, and, and I, think, I think not only just um, the number of kids we're happy about, but I think the, the, the talent level as well. So we're, we're optimistic about our football season. Okay. I think that women's soccer should begin to make a move. I think Monica's really happy with this year's recruit recruiting list and um, you know I, I don't think anyone's disappointed with their with their recruiting list from what okay. I what I see so you know the question will be hey can can soccer maintain and you know where do we go there mm -hmm. you know Redlands will be back in the mix this year for playoffs and right. last year they weren't yes. right um, so that that will be interesting and you know Chapman's come on and you know mm -hmm. Calou's come on obviously yep. and, and so you know you know now now we instead of you know, four teams. We got six teams mm -hmm. fighting it out, so to speak. And Laverne's probably going to be better. Um, you know, women's women's soccer. Can we make a move up? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, water polo. Can we stay where we're at? Mm -hmm. Right. Can can we can we do it again? We certainly have the talent, but harder to do it a second time around. And we're the favorite, so everyone's yeah. going to be gunning so, for us so, being on so, top. But the talent's there. Mm -hmm. it you is. know, um, you know, football. Uh, can we win? Can we win five games? Sure, it's there. You know, we could have won four last year, mm -hmm. you know, with a couple overtime wins yes. that we didn't get. So, mm -hmm. so uh, you know, volleyball. I mean, I look at volleyball, and I know that we lost a lot of players last mm -hmm. year, but Chris is really happy with the kids he's brought in. Yes. And that's going to be a fairly young team. Um, so we're building there. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I think it's no different than Trish, Trish's team with women's lacrosse. I mean, you know, Chris, by year three, should, should really have this thing going, hopefully. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and then we're going to take the next step up from – you know, sixth place to, to maybe fourth place. Okay. You know, I don't think that's an impossibility. And then, and I know Greg's really happy with with what he did with cross country. He brought in mm -hmm. a brand new assistant coach. He's super happy with, and and uh, had a had a wonderful high school career. So so I think together um, they're going to do a good job in, in, with our team. So uh, so recruiting's gone well here. And mm -hmm. and again, I think we'll probably bring in you know 180 to 200 kids. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I think we're th that's the bottom line is. Is, is having the depth in our rosters and, and uh, creating competition. That's the bottom line. So uh, I, I, I look for having a good fall. I really mm -hmm. do. Hopefully we're going to win another championship. Mm -hmm. um, you know, who knows, maybe more than one. And, uh, and I, think, I think the winter and spring as well. I think uh, the teams have done a nice job recruiting, and, and we can get off to a really strong start here, uh, you know, come August 15th. And last but not least, upgrades. The biggest upgrade that we have here. The weight room. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Yeah, the weight room's been great. School committed to to allowing us to, to get new equipment in the weight room. So we did a really nice job with, with uh, getting quotes from different companies and, and finalizing who we were going to use. So putting in over you know over a hundred thousand dollars worth of equipment into the weight room with new mm -hmm. racks and, and cardio equipment and so forth. So yeah, really happy with, with the upgrade there. Um, we'll be putting in a new scoreboard with softball at some point in the fall. Um, really happy about that uh, addition as well. So, you know, small little things here and there that we're doing. Um, but 
but I think the weight room obviously mm -hmm. is a really big, big upgrade for us. Yeah. Big impact for the program. Yeah, you know, absolutely. They, for the facility. Well, strength sure. conditioning is, yep. is gigantic. It you is. Know? And, and if, you know, in this day and age, if you're not doing that, you're missing the boat, mm -hmm. um, then, and obviously the equipment, it was long overdue. Mm -hmm. We had to do it. Um, and we did it on all in one shot, mm -hmm. which I think was a smart move to do. And uh, and I think you know yeah. we're going to see we're going to see some really good things mm -hmm. coming from that room. It looks great. It looks amazing yeah. down there. And looking forward to the new scoreboard for softball. It's going to look great yep. as well. Should but yeah, so, but Rob, thank you for joining this afternoon. Yeah, I really nice. appreciate it. Um, I want to thank Rob once again for taking the time this afternoon. Make sure you tune in to watch our next edition next month here in August as we delve deeper into the fall sports as we begin preparing for what lies ahead for the 2014-15 season. But make sure you go to wcpoets.com, and our edition today is brought to you by the Whittier College Sports Network. Thank you.